All right, all right. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I can see we have a lot of people in the, in the meeting. Thank you all. Uh, my name is Bob Mweti and uh, I'm basically uh, one of the partners in this uh, Kenya Airlift program, me and uh, Honorable DMK. Uh, we run the program. He's based out of uh, Kenya, I'm based in the US, and uh, I'm the program director of Upstack America, which is basically the company that is trying to bring you guys here in the US. Now, um, I'll give you a little bit of my, um, my background. I came to the US about um, 11 years ago. In fact, I came here in 2009, and I came here as, a, as an MBA student. Um, I, had, um, I had tried to get out of the country since 2001. I, that's when I finished my, uh, my KCSE. I tried to get to, I got my passport at that time. I was thinking maybe the following year I'll be out of the country. Initially, I wanted to go to the UK, but I couldn't make it. Uh, I was denied visa four times. I decided I would do my undergraduate in Kenya, which I never thought I would. But finally, I was able to make it here in 2009 as an MBA student. Now, I see a lot of people out there back home trying, you know, trying to come here, struggling with visas and things like those, struggling with finding funding to come to the U.S. and stuff like that. And that's really one of the main reasons why we formed this uh, airlift program, to make it easy for everybody who is out there. They are smart. They want to come and study here and actually, you know, uh, stay here after they graduate for them to be able to do that through the program. So that's really one of the main reasons why we formed the program. Okay, it's, it's all based on the some of the challenges that I faced uh, myself coming, uh, trying to get out of my country and to come and study here in the US. All right. Now, uh, in today's uh, webinar, I'm going to be walking you through the, the truth about living and working here in the US. I know a lot of people out there, a lot of you guys don't really know the, exactly the situation here on the ground. And that's really what I want to share with you. OK, because sometimes we tend to I don't know, there's, there's that there's that picture about, you know, the America or what you guys call Maju and all that, you know, there's, there's that picture that is always painted, you know, by most of the people who are here. But this, this webinar is for me to give you the exact, you know, what, what the truth is, okay, of how the situation is here on the ground, okay? And based on that, we'll, I'll try to explain to you why we really need this Kenya Airlift program, okay? Now, um... <clears throat> So, so, so there, are, there are three, three uh, ways that Africans come here in the U.S., okay? Uh, one of them is um, they usually come here, most of us come here either on a visit visa or trying to... <clears throat> most of us here, Africans, we come on a visit visa or student visa or on a DV lottery. Okay, the DV lottery is the one that, you know, people win the, you, I think you guys have heard about it, where you win the, uh, the green card lottery, and then you come here, you move here with your family. There's a lot of Kenyans who win that, okay, and I would advise you guys, even as you, you know, as you try to come to the U.S. through this program, I keep on telling everybody, even those who are already in the program, I keep on telling them to, uh, to apply for that green card lottery, okay, it's free. Okay, as long as you have a passport, nowadays they require you to have a passport, but please apply. Okay, please apply. You're going to know exactly why we need, you need to have that. If you can win it, even if you are here as a student and you win the, the, the DV lottery, the green card, it's still a very good option for you. Because at the end of the day, when you win that green card lottery, it means you come, you're coming here as a green card holder. And when you come here as a student, you're going to be striving to get that green card later on. Okay, and I'm going to be explaining the whole process of how re that really works. Okay, now, again, I've said uh, most Africans, they come here as visitors, students, or DV lottery winners. Okay, uh, well, there's other visas that uh, people can use to come here. There's visas also for work, but a lot of Africans, we don't really come to the U.S. on a work visa. Okay, majority of us, we either come as visitors, students, or DV lottery, green card lottery. Okay, now 
The problem, the problem with the visitor visa, which a lot of Africans we use, is that when you come here, when you come here on a visit visa, you and you decide you are not going to go back to your country, they, it's very, very hard for you to get, um, you know, to get into the system, okay, and actually be able to, uh, you know, work here and uh, work like good jobs, okay? And I see this mistake a lot with a lot of Africans, brothers and sisters. They come here, they get a chance, hey, you know what? They get a chance of maybe coming here for um, maybe for a conference or something. They were sent by the company that they work for back in Kenya or back in Africa, and they, they get that chance. They come here on a visitor visa, and then boom, they don't want to go back. They want to stay here. Now, one of the problem is, if you come here on a visit visa and, they, and then you don't go back, you won't be able to get um, the, the, the papers or the documents that will enable you to work in, um, in corporate America. Okay, even if you come here like someone who had, had a job back home, someone who is, you know, someone who is educated, someone who has the skills, you cannot be able to work in corporate America. Okay, let's say for example, like you guys, you're out there back in Kenya, maybe you are working somewhere, maybe, I don't know, maybe in a bank or something, maybe you are a manager or just even, not even a manager, just working there, you know, nice job and all that. But when you come here on a visit visa and, and you're not able to get your, you know, work authorization because you can't get work authorization if you come on a visit visa, then the only kind of jobs that you'll be doing here in the US, it's basically jobs, you know, these odd jobs, maybe cleaning people's houses, maybe, you know, uh, working in uh, nursing homes, maybe uh, you get employed by a, a fellow Kenyan or a fellow African. Okay, those are the kind of jobs that a lot of people do when they come here on a visit visa. Okay, you see, these are the things that a lot of people won't tell you. All they tell you is, hey, come here, when you get a chance, just come. But when you come here, what happens? Okay, do you want to come here and then now be doing these old jobs? If you have the brains, you know me, I'm talking to people who are smart. You guys, all of you guys, you guys are smart people. We filtered you out, right? Anyone who is in this, um, in the WhatsApp, in the Telegram group, all of you guys, we believe that you have the qualifications that you're looking for. Okay, so if you are smart, you are someone who scored like a B in high school, you have a degree, and then come here and start doing all these old jobs. Even if they are paying well, it's not, they are not really that good. Okay, because what you really don't understand is sometimes is, because here in the US, life is very expensive. Okay, you can be, let's say for example, you are working somewhere, being paid to clean, um, you know, to clean someone's house, you are making probably maybe about $15 an hour which is about maybe 1,500 Kenya shillings per hour. But you know, when you put it, you know, uh, you convert it into Kenya shillings, you might think like it's a lot of money that you are earning every hour. But actually in America, that's not a lot of money. Okay, so, so, so that's something that you really need to think about. And a lot of our people, I see a lot of people, they come here in the US. They were maybe managers somewhere in Kenya, you know, working somewhere as managers, assistant managers or something like that. Okay, they have their brains, they have degrees, they come here and they come as visitors. They don't want to go back, but what kind of jobs they do here? They do those odd jobs. Jobs that do not reflect what they went to school for. Jobs that do, do not reflect the skills that they have. Okay, and that's why I'm having this webinar. I want you guys, I don't want you guys to make mistakes because no one tells you. Okay, a lot of people, they just tell you, hey, you know what, just come to the US. Okay, then what? What kind of jobs are you going to be doing when you are here in the US? Okay, what kind of job are you going to be doing here in the US? You have the brains, you have the skills. You don't want to be washing people's houses. You don't want be, to be taken care of, you know, uh, the elderly. Okay, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be cleaning uh, bathrooms. All right, you want to be, you want to come here and do jobs that reflect what you have as skills. Okay, that's what you need. And this is, I, again, like I've told you, this is the problem that we have with a lot of Africans. We come here blindly, we are told, hey, you know what? Oh, just come here, you know, get something, get, you know, get, you know, get in, you know, you, you, you are invited by someone, get an invitation by someone, you know, come for a graduation and then refuse to go back. That's a wrong approach that we really need to stop. If you're really, if you really want to come here, get a good job, 
Okay, make good money. When I talk about good money, I talk about good money. I mean good money. All right, guys, good money. All right, don't come here blindly. Don't be told to come on a visit visa. Okay, now, the other visa, DV lottery, it's a lottery. So not a lot of people can be able to, it, it, not many win. In fact, actually, I think in Kenya, maybe about 5,000 people on average every year, they win the, the, the lottery. Okay, so, and millions and millions apply for that lottery. Okay, so not many people can win, you know, but if you, if, but if you win, that's good. That's like the best visa that you can use to come here in the U.S., okay that's the best visa but again not everybody can win it okay even me i tried me the first green card i tried was in 2001 when i started thinking of coming you know leaving kenya and you know going uh, abroad okay my dad lives in england so you know he, he had started telling me about all these things green cards and stuff like that so i knew about all those i started applying i never won even i kept, when i came to the us i kept on applying even when i was a student i couldn't win all right so it's very very hard but people win so if you win that that's the best visa that you can use to come here in the us all right that's the best visa the dv lottery green card okay now let's get to the student visa because that's another visa that a lot of Africans used to come here, okay? Now, when it comes to student visas, a student visa gives you a path to citizenship. And this is what a lot of people don't know, okay? Now, when you come on an F1, it's called, usually, uh, if you come here on an academic program, let's say, for example, you're coming for your master's, you're coming for your bachelor's, then you're gonna be, you're gonna get an F1 visa, okay? an F1 student visa, okay? And that visa gives you a path to permanent residency and uh, becoming a citizen, okay? I'll tell you how. Now, when you come as a, as a student, as an F1 student, when you graduate from university here in the US, you are given one, um, you are given a work authorization, okay? You apply for it, okay? You are given one year of work authorization if you are doing any degree that is not STEM, all right, and if you are doing a STEM degree, you are given up to three years of work authorization. Okay, now, during this time, once you get that work authorization after you've graduated from college, once now you get this work authorization, that's now when you look for employers who can employ you, okay, for you now to transition from a student to a skilled worker. Okay, listen and listen carefully. All right, now, Again, the F1 student visa has a clear path to citizenship, okay? A clear path to citizenship, okay? And I always say this, a student visa is the best non-immigrant visa that you can ever use to come, and, to come here in the US. If you really want to come here and live here long term, there is a way out if you are coming on a student visa. You come on a visitor visa, you're gonna be struggling. Okay, you're going to be struggling for you to get a green card when you come on a visit visa. Either a lot of people, you never know these things until you get here. A lot of people, when you come on a visit visa, how do they get the green card? Most of the time, either they get married to an American citizen, all right, or most of the time, also people file asylum, all right. So these are things, these are secrets that a lot of, well, it's not really secret, but a lot of people, we don't share about this, this, this kind of information to the outside world, to those who are in Kenya, those who are in Africa, okay? Until when you land here, that's when you start hearing, oh, you know what, you need, you need papers. We call them makratas here. Oh, you need makratas. What do you do? You know, you start struggling now because now for you to be able to work in corporate America, you need the papers. You need the papers. When you come here on a visit visa, you, don't, you can't even get something called a social security number, which is like your PIN back in your country, back in Kenya. Okay, if you don't have that PIN, the social security number, you can't work. Okay, you can't work legally. So the only job that you can do is these odd jobs that we've talked about earlier. Okay, anyways, going back to the student visa. Student visa, again, like I said, it's the best non-immigrant visa that you can use to come here in the U.S. if you really want to come here and stay here long term. All right. Now, so, so when you graduate and you are given that work authorization, it's called OPT, Optional Practical uh, Training, okay, uh, work authorization. It basically gives you um, an option of looking for a job 
here in the US based on what you went to school for. Okay, for example, now if you come here on a master's program, you did analytics like whatever we have in our Kenya Airlift program, when you graduate, you can't start looking for jobs like, let's say, for example, um, maybe working in a, in a McDonald's, okay? You know, like, you know, uh, cooking pizza and stuff like that, because that's not really the kind of uh, qualifications that you have, right? You came here, you did your analytics program. So if you, if you really want to stay here, even with that work authorization, you have to find an employer, okay? You have to find a job that is tied to what you went to school for. So you have to look for a job that is tied to IT. Okay, now, the thing is, the US government gives three years of work authorization for those who have a STEM degree. Okay, those who come here for a STEM program, whether it's bachelor's, whether it's master's, PhD, whatever it is. Okay, because they value STEM a lot. And not just the US only. Everywhere across the world, STEM degree is very marketable. A STEM degree is very, very marketable. STEM means science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Any degree that is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, it's called STEM. Okay, acronym, STEM, S-T-E-M. All right, these are very valuable skills. Okay, even here in the US, the US government, they give three years of work authorization if you have a STEM degree. Okay, now, if you look at our program, we, are only, we only want those who can do an IT master's program because we know it's a STEM program. Okay, it's a STEM program. It's give you, it will give you a higher chance of getting a job. There's a need for people with STEM skills. Okay, and it will give you three years of work authorization after you graduate. Now, I told you guys, I came to the US on an MBA program. Okay, that MBA program gave me only one year of work authorization. Okay, one year of work authorization. You see, me, I didn't know anything about all these things. And that's why actually even, um, not just this webinar, I do a lot of, um, I, I post a lot of content out there on social media. For those who follow me, if you don't, please do. I do, um, I have my YouTube uh, channel. I have a Facebook page. I share a lot of information about coming to study here in the US because I realize a lot of people, they come here blindly. Okay, even those who come as students. Okay, they don't know these things. They don't know if you are doing that kind of, a, like for example, if you are doing an MBA, you're gonna get just one year of work authorization. Within that one year, I'm telling you, it's very hard for you to be able to find, and, and especially if, if no one really tells you what exactly you need to do, it's going to be very, very hard for you to find someone who is willing to employ you. I'm going to tell you why. Because, you see, when you have one year of work authorization and you are approaching an American employer, they see you are an international student, you know, and you only have one year of work authorization. So they look at that and they're like, you know what, why do I have to train you spend so much money on you, get you a job to work for us, let's say, for example, like our company, right, and employ you, right, and then now after one year, you go back, you see, so a lot of companies, they are not willing to take in international students who have just one year of work authorization, but you have a, if you have a STEM degree, you have up to three years, okay, I don't want, if, if as an employer, I don't want to employ, I mean, I don't want to get someone spend so much money on, on, you know, coaching them, training them on how my business works and things like those. And then a few months down the line, they are out of here because, you know, they are supposed to work for only one year. Okay. So it's very, very hard for a lot of international students. Okay. And most of them, they come like that because no one really told them, like, you know, when you graduate, you're going to get just one year of work authorization. I always say this, if I really knew that I would get only one year of work authorization with my MBA, I wouldn't have done the MBA. I would have done something to do with IT. Me, I, when, I, when I was coming to the US, no one had told me anything. I was just blind, okay? I was just going on the internet, Googling, even with school that I, that I, want, I want to go and study. I didn't know anything. And that's the problem that we normally have with a lot of Africans here in the US. They come here as students, okay? They come as students, and then they are not able to transition from being a student to getting good jobs, okay? And most of them, they come here, they do all kinds of degrees, 
all kinds of degrees. Not every degree out there is marketable. Guys, that's why we are focusing on IT master's program. You know, a lot of you guys ask me, why IT? Why analytics? Why this? Why this? Because I've been here and I know I've seen it. Okay, you come with you come holding other degrees. I'm telling you, you're gonna struggle. I came on a I had a Bachelor of Commerce degree from Kenya. And I came with I came to do my MBA, like I've told you. I could not find a job, even an internship, when I graduated. Okay. In fact, actually, I had to extend my school by one semester, trying to figure out how to find a job. Okay trying to figure out how to find out. And even those kind of jobs that I was looking for, those are not even well-paying jobs. I remember even being denied a job to work as a tailor with Wells Fargo Bank. Tailor job. And yet, I used to work as a tailor back in Kenya. I used to work for Equity Bank in Westland. That used to be my job before I got here, before I got my visa. I was working at Equity Bank, Westland's branch, okay, as a tailor. So, even with that kind of qualifications, being a teller, having an MBA, and having a bachelor's degree in accounting and finance, I have a become in accounting and finance from Strathmore. I could not find a teller job. Okay, I was looking for these jobs where I can become an accountant. Okay, you know, entering, you know, transactions for companies, you know, those kind of jobs. Because also I used to work in Kenya before I got the job at Equity Bank. I used to work as, a, as an account clerk. Okay, for, a, for, a, for, a, for an insurance brokerage firm. Okay, it's called uh, Alexander Forbes. All right? So, so I had those kind of, that kind of background and I was trying to look for those kind of jobs here and I couldn't find them. And that's what really a lot of people, they come here, a lot of Africans, they come here, students, they graduate, they have all kinds of degrees and they start, to start looking for these kind of jobs. You can't find those jobs because a lot of Americans, they have those jobs, they need those jobs as well. Okay, they need those jobs and those kind of jobs. Let's say, for example, like me who had a Bachelor of, a bachelor of Commerce degree. I'm looking for an accounts clerk kind of a job. Okay, that kind of a job. A lot of Americans, they have those kind of skills, right? They are looking for these kind of jobs. You won't find a lot of companies willing to employ you. Okay, they would rather em employ their own Americans. Okay, and that's why I had now to shift into IT. Okay, I shifted into IT because... Uh, because of the fact that I couldn't get a job with the kind of qualifications that I had, all right? So, um, and luckily, you know me, I'm, very, I'm a very inquisitive person. So I looked, I tried to see, because I, I was just sitting there and wondering, hey, you know what, I can't find a job, you know, what do I do now? Me, the last thing that I wanted to do is to go back to Kenya. I had said I was not going to Kenya. That's what I had said. I came here to work, I came here to school, but after school, I wanted to work here in the US. I had said I was not going to go to Kenya. In fact, actually, we're in bad terms with my parents because they wanted me to go back to Kenya. They were like, why are you struggling there? Why are you trying to find a job? You can't find one. Go back and start working for equity. But I was like, no, I can't. I don't want to. Okay, we are not in good terms with them because they really wanted me to go back and I didn't want to. And they were like, oh, you know what, Bob, you, you just want to stay there and just, you know, be like the others who are in, the, in America, do all these kind of job, care job. We'll talk about care jobs, okay? Do all these care jobs and stuff like that. That's not really what I wanted, but that, that was not really, that was, that was what my parents were thinking. That's what I wanted to do, okay? So anyways, I found some Indian, Indian friends in my class, in my MBA class, I realized they were graduating from school. All of all Indians who were in my class, they were graduating and finding jobs here in the US, mostly in the IT sector. Even those that I went to same class, MBA. Okay, I hear, hey, this, I told you guys that I had to extend my school by one semester. Those guys who graduated the previous semester that I had to extend, those guys, they had already gotten jobs, Indians, okay? I could hear, oh, this one is working at, I don't know, Yahoo, I don't know, um, you know, those big companies, you know, as business analysts, systems analysts, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, why the hell can't I even get a job? And yet these guys are getting jobs, you know? So I started, you know, asking questions. You know, some of them I started asking, like, what do I, what do I, what, what do I need to do for me to get a job? They told me, hey, you know what? you need to be trained. If you really want a job, 
The only way that you can be able to get a job in this country is by you getting into the tech industry. Okay, by you getting into the tech industry. And then I was like, how do I get into the tech industry? So they told me, hey, you know what? You can be trained either as a business analyst or as a systems analyst. Okay, you just need to find companies out there. There's a lot of Indi Indian companies. I'm telling you guys, in this IT industry here in the US, 90% of people who work in the tech industry in, in, here in America, they are Indians. You will not find a lot of our people working in the tech industry. You won't. 90% Indians. 90% Indians. So they told me, hey, you know what? You can, you can be trained, okay, in any, any technology in IT, and then now you will be able to get a job with those kind of skills. So that's really what I did. I got trained. I, was, I tried. I tried to get trained by one of, you know, some of these uh, Indian companies, and I was lucky enough to find one that was willing to take me on board, okay? And I was trained as an Oracle systems analyst, okay? So I graduated in May of 2011. Then I was able to find the training in uh, July of 2011, within two months, okay? And another thing, by the way, I didn't mention, when you graduate and you get that work authorization, actually you are supposed to find something, to do something within the first 60 days. If you don't get something, you are screwed. You are staying here illegally. So that's another thing that a lot of people don't know. So if you are struggling, so I was able to get that training. You can, you can get any kind of training, that's fine. You can get any kind of job. It doesn't have to be a paid job for you to maintain your status as a student. When I talk about status, I mean Im Im your immigration status. That's what they call it here in the US, okay? Immigration status, status as a student, okay? So if you can't find anything within the first 60 days of graduation, okay, even though you have that work authorization, if you can't find anything, then you are staying here illegally and you can be deported. That's what you, what, that's what you need to know. So a lot of people don't know these things. So anyways, before the 60 days were over, by around July, I was able to find this training. Can you imagine, guys, about almost 60 days, struggling, trying to figure out, how do I find this? How do I find this? Okay, but, but anyways, I was able to get that. I got trained, I got trained as an Oracle systems, you know, uh, consultant or analyst. And I finished my training around uh, December. And by January, that's when I got my first project. January of 2012. I, that's when I got my first job. I remember it was January 13th, the first day I reported for work. Working as an Oracle systems analyst somewhere in Kansas City, Kansas. All right, guys. So it took me time. You can imagine from May until January 2012, from May 2011 to January 2012. That's how long it took me for me to figure things out and actually get a well-paying job. That job was paying me about, um, about half a million Kenya shillings a month. Okay, half a million Kenya shillings. That's a, that's, that's a decent amount of money. Not a lot of people actually can make that kind of money here in the US. That's the truth. Okay, we're gonna talk about that uh, as we move along in this webinar. Okay, so I was able to make that kind of money initially. Okay, and then now after that, I worked, you know, I also now, I didn't tell you that now, once you start working, now the company that you get to work for, they have also now to file for you. You can't keep on working on your, on, on that OPT authorization that I, I, I already told you about. Now the company now that you find, which is willing to, um, to, to, you know, to sponsor you, they must sponsor you now for another visa called H1B visa. Okay, H1B visa. This is a visa, it's uh, for skilled workers, all right, and that, that visa gives you ability to work up to six years here in the US. All right, now, again, now, once you start now working on your H1B visa, nowadays there's a lottery that's, that, um, that is done. The, 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 the US government gives about 85,000 visas, H1B visas every year, but nowadays there's a lot of companies applying for these visas than the visas that are available. Okay, so, they normally they have to do a lottery. But if you have a master's degree, you have a higher chance because normally they do two lotteries for masters because the US government gives 65 for undergraduate, 65,000 visas, H1B visas for undergraduate, and then another 20,000 visas for master's students. Now, the way they do the lottery is they put you in the first port 
of the 65,000 for undergraduate. So all masters and undergraduate, they are put into that pot. And then now they pick the first 65,000 out of that. And then now the second pot is only, the 20,000 is only for master's student. So you have a chance, uh, two chances of getting picked. Okay, now you may ask like how many, how many applications do they get? You know, usually, like I've told you, it's 85,000 in total, but normally they are getting around 200 around their applications. So you can, you, can, you can do your math, the probability of getting picked. Okay, now here's the, here, here is the beauty of having a degree like a master of business analytics because it's a, it's a STEM program. So even if you're not picked this year, you still have other two years, you know, to try your luck to be picked in the, in the H-1B visa lottery okay so you still have two more years so increase your chances now if you had an mba you came here and do, did your mba and you are not picked the first time that's it now for you now for you to stay here legally the only thing that you you the only way that you can be able to stay here legally is for you to go back to school and maintain your student status and now you can imagine going back to school what what you know it, it will cost you money to go back to school for you at, just for you to maintain the student uh, status so that's why it's very, very important for you to take this master's in IT. Okay, they, that's one of the main reasons why we are, we are doing this program. Okay, because we know that it's going to give you a higher chance of staying here in the US. Okay, so if you come here blindly, oh, I want to do MBA, I want to do this, blah, 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 you're going to find yourself in struggle. The problem that a lot of Africans face here. That's why we have so many people here in the US who came as international students, but they don't have any papers. They are not, they are out of status. Okay, they don't have, in the moment you're out of status, you can't have good jobs. You can't work in corporate America. Okay, you can only work just all these old jobs that we talked about. Okay, and that a lot of our people, guys, a lot of our people do those jobs. And it's not because they don't have the skills. They have the skills. They have the skills, but they have the skills to go out there and work in corporate America, but they don't have the papers. Okay, they don't have the papers. Now, another good thing is within those three years of your work authorization, you can also still accumulate your, you know, your experience as you work. And then also the company can still file for your green card. You don't have to wait until six years of your H-1B for you now to get your green card for a company to file for your green card. Again, also the company has to, to file for you. They have to sponsor you. If you don't find a company that is willing to sponsor you, you're screwed. Okay. You can't get a green card. All right. So what do people do if you can't? And what are, that's, this is what a lot of our people do. They get married. They, they, they file a salem. Those are the things that no one will tell you when you're back there. You're going to know those things when you're here. Okay, so this is, this is the reality. This is the truth about being here in the US. Those are the challenges that you will never know when you are back home until you land here. Okay, and these are the problems that we are actually trying to solve with this Kenya Airlift program. Okay, you know, I know a lot of you guys out there, all you, all you are saying is, hey, you know what? There's this amazing program is giving people a chance to get education in the U.S. by finding, you know, funding for them in terms of unsecured loans and, uh, I mean, and, and uh, graduate assistantship uh, awards, okay? But it, there's more to that. There's more to that. This is what we are trying to solve with this program, okay? We want to have a situation where when you come here, you have a high chance of getting a job and getting immigration papers, okay? We can be able to absorb you as a company. Okay, we can be able to get you jobs. We do a lot of job placement here in the US, in the IT sector. Okay, we do IT training programs. Also, we do placement services. We know where, who is asking for what, what skills are needed. We train people here on Oracle, the same skills that I, I got trained on. We also train on robotics, process automation. We also train on machine learning. Those are job skills that are needed here in America. Okay, most of the time, when you have, if you just have academic skills, those are not enough to get you a job. I've told you guys, I had to get trained as an Oracle consultant. So those are the skills that we train you on, on the side, as you pursue your master's. Okay, as you pursue your master's, you come here, you're doing an, your analytics. At the same time, also, we are training you on the side 
to do these skills so that by the time you graduate within those two years of your master's already you have the skills that are needed in the job market and you won't have a problem getting a job so you guys can see now what you are trying to resolve here okay because i know a lot of people out there they don't really have that bigger picture of what this program is trying to to solve i know you guys all you you are thinking is so you know what i'm able to get money to get and start to go and study there but then after that then what what happens how do you transition from a student to a worker how do you get those good jobs okay how do you get those good jobs guys it's not a walk in the park a lot of people they come here and they struggle they struggle a lot that's what no one tells you that's what you need to know all right <clears throat> now so what jobs do majority Africans do in America? And what jobs do majority of Asians, specifically Indians, do here in the US? Okay, I'm going to open up for you guys. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You need to know these things. Okay, you need to know this. All right? Now, most Africans, all right? I know you guys, maybe even you have people back home, okay, maybe your family, friends that are here in, in America, ask them. If they are very honest with you, ask them the kind of jobs that a lot of Africans do here in America. They will tell you if they, are, if they are honest enough. Most Africans, what we do here, mostly we are healthcare workers. Nothing wrong by being a healthcare worker. Don't get me wrong. Okay, nothing wrong by nothing wrong with being a healthcare worker nothing wrong but a lot of people we do these healthcare jobs because we don't we cannot be able to do what what you know the kind of jobs that we should with the kind of skills that we have so the only option that is left for us is to become a healthcare worker you will hear a lot of people telling you oh, become a nurse in fact actually when you land here in the u.s a lot of people they tell you oh, you know what the only job that you can do here in the u.s that will get you money is becoming a nurse working in a in a nursing home you know working somewhere in a hospital or a nursing home you know um helping out you know hold uh, older people and all that stuff okay those are the, mostly those are the jobs that we do that's the bitter truth that's what no one will tell you until you land here and start people start telling you oh you know what oh become a nurse become this a lot of people i know so many people who come through our programs whatever we train here okay and they are doing nursing and they want to change because nursing is not for everybody okay nursing is a calling it's like being a teacher okay nothing wrong with being a nurse don't get me wrong but at the end of the day this is not a job for everybody out there we can't all be nurses so that's one of the things that we really want to change with this program we want to change this not everybody can come here and become a nurse okay we can do better there are better jobs here in america there's really good jobs here in america i'm telling you having been having worked in corporate america working for fortune 500 companies that can i can tell you it there's really good jobs out there amazing jobs a job that you go you go you work you really love the job it pays you amazingly well and you can do amazing things i'm telling you guys Sometimes I feel bad when I see people struggling so much and yet they have the brain. It kills me. I see people struggling with all these old jobs. Oh, truck driving. And that's another job also. A lot of us, a lot of male, Kenyan men, African men, we are most of them, a lot of them, not most, but a lot, truck drivers, truck drivers. Okay, nothing wrong. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with being a truck driver. But let me ask you, if you had a degree back home, you came here, you did your master's, would you want to become a truck driver? Is that really what, what you wanted to become here in the US? Is that really what you wanted to become? You wanted to become a healthcare person, taking care of old people and stuff like that, or becoming, you see, these are the things that no one will tell you when you're back home. When you come here and they start, people will start telling you, oh, you know what, the only job that you can do here is healthcare, blah, blah, blah. And that's what a lot of people do because a lot of people also, they come here on visitor visa, they can't do any other job. They're gonna get jobs working as trackers. Okay, they're gonna be employed by someone, you know, an African who has some tracking business, you know. They're gonna work as healthcare people. Okay, it's easy to get those jobs because those jobs are not, Amer a, lot of, a lot of Americans, they don't do those jobs. That's why they are there. Okay, now, look here. 
compare that. I can see questions. Please ask those questions. I'll be able to respond to them after this. Okay. I don't want to, to, to look at the questions now, but keep on asking those questions on the chat. I'll go through them. All right. Now, look at the jobs that Indians do. Look at the jobs that Indians do. What do they do? You'll never find an Indian working as a healthcare worker. Really, really, I'm telling you, really. Most Indians, you'll find them in the tech industry. I've worked in the tech industry for, um, for those years, about eight years now. 90, 70 to 90% of those who work in the tech industry, Indians. They are the ones who implement those projects. You won't find a lot of Americans in the tech industry. Because tech industry is not for everybody. You have to have the brains. You have to be smart. Okay. And that's why we want anybody who comes through this Kenya airlift program. They have to be smart people. I have to tell you the truth. If you come to the program, you're not smart. You're not going to make it. It's what it is. Seriously. It's what it is. You come to this program, you're not smart. I can't take you. Because you're going to struggle. You can't even cope up with the demands that are there. I'm telling you, in the tech industry, there's a lot of turnover. Because the expectation is that you can deliver. If you can't deliver those projects, you're going to be kicked out. Okay? That's why we need smart people. If you see me telling you guys, I want you to have at least a 3.0 GPA. You need a B in KCSE. I know what I mean. It's because of the, what is needed in the tech industry. You go out there, you are implementing a million dollar project and you go and screw it up. What's going to happen? You're going to be kicked out the following day. I'm telling you, it's what it is. Here it's not like Kenya, where they, they, you know, they entertain mediocrity. This is America, first world. You don't perform, you are kicked out of, that, out of that project the following day. I'm telling you, it's what it is. So for me, I have to make sure that anybody who comes to do, through this program, it's someone actually can be able to find a job when they get here. I don't want you to come here, you come to the US, and then after that, you can't be able to get a job, or you get a job, then you are fired. Then what? You understand, guys? So that's really why I, we need people who have at least a B. I don't, by the way, to be honest with you guys, I don't care what, most of the time, I don't even look at your uh, bachelor's degree. Because I know, if you really did your KCSE, Okay, without stealing. Okay, because also you know Kenya the way things are, right? Like a lot of people, they steal these exams. But if you did your KCSE and you got at least a B, you are smart. If you didn't have any more Kenya, no one gave you anything and you got a B, you must be a smart person. That one I know. I scored a B plus. I know how hard it was for me to get a B plus. I can tell you, I used to wake up early in the morning at four in the morning to study. For me to get that B plus, I know the kind of effort that it takes to get that kind of a grade. So anyone who scores a B, that person is smart. No matter what they got in, in, in uh, university, because university can be a little bit misleading. I know that because we train people here in the US, they say, oh, you know what? I have a degree from, I don't know which university, this, this. They even have first class honors, but you put them in a project or you put them in a program to train, they can't even handle it. They drop off. I've seen these things. So I know that's why we look at those high school grades. Okay. So unless you stole, if you stole and we, we take you on board, that's fine. But we're going to figure out because you can't handle, you can't handle analytics classes. I'm telling you, this is not just for anybody out there on the streets. You have to be really smart. Okay. Now you see the kind of jobs that Indians do. IT consultants, lawyers, 50% of the lawyers you'll find around Indians. Huh? 50% of lawyers that you'll find around Indians. Now, if you go to hospitals, who do you find there? Indians are the doctors. You will rarely see Africans being doctors. I've told you guys, most Africans will find them as nurses. And that's what a lot of people you come here, they'll tell you. Become a nurse. This and this and this. Okay, all right. Most Indians, they'll be doctors. They won't be nurses, they'll be doctors. That's one, that, this is what we need to change. 
This is what we are trying to change with this Kenya Airlift program. We need our own doctors, our own IT consultants, our own lawyers. Okay, we need these jobs. But of course, you see now for us as a company, we are an IT company. So we can't really venture into all these lawyer jobs or doctors or whatever. So we can only take IT people. If we can be able to do that and get IT people here, build a movement, that's an impact that we've made. Okay, we are okay with that. We don't want to venture into those other things. Okay, someone else can take lawyers, someone else can take doctors. Okay, the field is open. But for us, we want smart IT consultants. We can implement amazing things here in the US. We can be known as the best brains in the US comprised of Africans from Kenya. Companies will be looking for us because we have the skills. A lot of companies out there, they are not able to figure out where to find smartest people. All we need to say is, hey, you know what? We have a bunch of brilliant Kenyans who scored the best grades with the best qualifications, put them in a project, they'll do it. They'll do it. They'll do it, guys. We just need to be together. We just need to work together, be one. Because what I've realized also is a lot of people, they don't, a lot of our people, we don't like helping each other. And that's what a lot of Indians, they're very good at. They are very networked. They love helping each other. Here in, Af in, in America and even in Kenya, unless someone, when someone is, you know, when they're doing well in America and the others are looking, you know, you know, they are looking at them up there. That's when people are like, happy. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the, you know, I am the one who has the money. I'm the rich guy here, around here. People don't want to share this information. That's what we are. That's why we struggle. That's what we want to change in this program. Okay, we are sharing all these things. I share all this information. No one pays me to share all this information that I share everywhere on the internet, on TV, wherever, on YouTube, everywhere. I talk about these things because I can clearly see where these Indians have gone. I'm telling you guys, if you come to America today, I take you, we live in Tampa, Florida, a very nice place, by the way, very, very nice, by the, you know, by the ocean and all that. If you really want here in Tampa, good place. Now, if I take you to one of some of the best neighborhoods, like in uh, Lavington of Kenya, right? Of the US, right? Lavington, Runda, whatever, right? Here in Tampa, who do you think lives there? Do you think we'll find a, a, a lot of Africans there? A lot of Kenyans? Do you think you'll find them? Wapi, never. If you find one, maybe one, two. The only people that you can find there is white Americans. White Americans, yeah? And the only immigrants that you'll find there, guess who? You make a guess. Indians, Indians, I'm telling you, Indians, Indians. Okay, now let's see another statistics here. Okay, I told you guys, I'll tell you the truth. This is the truth of living and working here in the US. No one else will tell you these things, these things. Okay, no one will share this information with you guys. All people tell you is, oh, come, come to America, bro. then what? What happens? Okay, then what? Let me, let's move to the next. Now, this is, this is the median household income in the US. Guys, look. This is the median household income in America. If you put the income from the lowest all the way to the top, the middle one, where do you find Indians? A hundred thousand dollars per year an indian family they make about a hundred thousand you think about it think about it a hundred thousand dollars a year nigerians 61 white americans 70 thousand white people indians they come to this country as immigrants like us, okay? Indians, they come to this country as like us Africans, they struggle, they are not white people, they go through the same racist, whatever, if you think about all those kind of things, okay? And we're gonna talk about that thing because I get a lot of people asking me, hey, I got some, someone texting me on, uh, on, the, on the group, hey, you know what, this racist, whatever, we're gonna talk about that as well, okay? Now, anyways, they go through 
everything that we go through, they also go through it. They are not white people. Okay. They are not white people. This is not their country. Okay. They come here as immigrants, just like us. Okay. So there should be no excuses. If the other people are succeeding, why not us? You understand? You get it. Now, look, their median household income is $100,000 per year. The white Americans, 70,000. Black Americans, 41,000. Black Americans, they're always at the lower end. Okay, the ones who are, you know, born and brought up here in the U.S. Okay, unfortunately, they're usually at the bottom. Okay, there's a lot of factors. I don't want to get into all that. Okay, but anyways, if you want to do, you can do your own research. You'll be able to know exactly why this and this, why the disparities and all that. Okay, there's a lot of factors, but I don't want to dwell on all that. Okay, but anyways, my picture, the picture that I wanted to portray here is where these Indians are in the income bracket compared to us. Now, Kenyans, I couldn't find actually the, 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 the exact data for Kenyans. There are somewhere I, I saw, like, I, think, I think it's like 45,000. Other ones I saw it was 50 something. So I couldn't get, you know, good numbers, like, you know, exact number for Kenyans, but it's, it's less than 60,000, okay, per annum. In fact, actually I had, it's, Kenyans make about, I think they make about 45, close to 50 per year. But anyways, let's assume it's less than 60,000. Can you see where, where we are, the difference between us and the Indians? You know, you know, you guys, you see, you know, when you're in Kenya, you think, you know, it's all roasting. I mean, yes, there's money here, but it's not that much. Okay. You know, we, when we send money home, a lot of people struggle here, you know? We struggle with bills and all that. It's not like we make a lot of money. I'm telling you, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. Seriously. We can do better. We can do better if we have good jobs. Now, why do you think Indians are making 100,000? You tell me. Why do you think they are making 100,000? Because they have good jobs, as you saw. They are IT consultants, they are lawyers, they are doctors. That's why their median household income is this. Why are we making less than the Nigerians? Why are you making less than 60,000 per year? It's because of the jobs that majority of our people do. It's because majority of our people, they come as visitors. They don't know, they are told, hey, come to America. Then they come here, they can't get the papers. And if they don't get the papers, they can't work in corporate America. They can't work like, you know, for example, as, like as a consultant, even if you have like IT background, you can't. So they end up doing all these jobs where you are told, hey, you know what, you're gonna make money you know, you're in, when you're in healthcare. That healthcare, by the way, to make really good money, the good thing with healthcare is that you can do more shifts. You know, we call them doubles here. Okay, so you see people, they work like crazy. 80 hours, 60, 80 hours a week. Okay, for you to make even close to what you can make as an IT consultant. Ask me, I've been there. I've been there as an IT consultant. Okay, I started making six figure salary, $100,000 a year. One year after I got my first job, I told you my first job, I, I was getting paid half a million. Within a year, I was making close to a million Kenya shillings a month. A million Kenya shillings a month within a year. If I was working as a healthcare guy, as a truck driver, do you think I'll be making that kind of money? Think about it. So why can't you guys come, do exact same thing that I did, get into the tech industry and make good money? If I can be able to make a million Kenya shillings a month, why can't someone else who has the same brains like, like I have, why can't they come here, okay, get into the same, same path and not make the same kind of money that I used to make? Let me tell you one thing. You know, when I used to work as a consultant, I used to work for Citibank, and uh, one of my friends, I used to have a lot of Indian friends, by the way, before I started the business now and you know, I don't hang out a lot with a lot of people. But then those days, I used to have a really good friend. And I, one day we were drinking, okay, hanging out, you know. And I asked him, like, bro, did you, did, you, did you know that you'd be doing this job that we do? 
here in, uh, at City. Get what, what he told me. He told me, Bob, yes, I knew I would be doing this job. I asked him, did you know that you would be doing this job that you are doing here now when you are still back in your country, back in India? Did you know that you would be doing this kind of a job? He told me, yes. I knew that I would be doing this and this and this and this and this. I knew I knew I would be an IT consultant making this kind of money. Now, you guess what do you think I used I knew anything about IT when I was in Kenya before I got here? <laughs> I had no idea what IT was, I had no idea what Oracle was, no idea what would happen after I graduated from college, nothing. Nothing, guys. Okay, so these guys are like two, three steps ahead of us. Okay, they know. Before they leave India, they know that they're going to come here, they are going to do this program, they're going to graduate, they're going to have this, they're going to get here. And most companies in the US IT companies, they're all owned by Indians. Indians, they are willing to help them, their own people. They will get all these papers and everything. I got my papers through an Indian company not through an American company. American companies, they won't sponsor you. They don't understand our problems. You'll get papers either through our company or we can get you papers through our Indian companies. You work as consultants through other Indian companies here in the US because majority in the tech industry, they are Indian companies. They'll sponsor you. You'll be able to get your papers. But when you go looking for papers through, looking for sponsorship of employment-based papers, H1B, Green card through American companies, those ones, they don't care. They are willing to, to, to know to hire their own American people. They don't care. They don't even understand the concept of papers and, you know, work authorization and stuff like that. Okay. So they would rather deal with their own American people. So these Indians, they, before they get here, they know exactly what they're going to become. How can you be competing with that kind of a person? Well, we talk about Kenya, huh? From Kenya, now that you are clueless, you come here, you don't even know what's going to happen after you graduate. You don't know anything, nothing like that. You No clue, nothing. You don't know what's going to happen after you graduate. That's how I came here. That's how I came here, I'm telling you guys. I was so happy I'd gotten the visa. I told you I was denied visa many times. I got the visa, I was so happy. But if you ask me, like, what's going to happen after you are done with school? I had no idea. And that's what a lot of our people come like. That's why we have so many Africans who don't have the papers. And most of them, they came as international students. That's the truth. That's why I come on as international student. You want to come as a student. You don't even want to come through the program. Okay, at least figure out those things. Okay, figure out how you're gonna be able to get papers, how you're gonna be able to transition from a student to a skilled worker here in the US. Because majority of our people, they are struggling. In fact, actually, in fact, 30, about 30 to 40% of Africans here in America, they don't have their legal immigration papers to live and work in America. Okay, no one will tell you these things, guys. No one will share with you this information when you are back home. But once you kifika apa, you you will know. I'm telling you, the first thing that you think about when you land in this country is immigration papers. How are you gonna get that green card? You guys, as you start preparing to get into this program, even if you don't get in the, pro in the program, that's fine. But if you really want to come to the US, how will you get your green card? That's what you need to think of. Stop thinking about how you're gonna get a job. You need the papers first for you to get a job. Don't get things twisted. You get the papers, getting a job is not a problem as long as you have the skills that are needed. Okay, all right, because a lot of people they, oh, I want to get a job, I got, yes, job, yes. But you can't work in corporate America without the right documents. Okay, and for you to have the right documents, you have to have an employer who is willing to sponsor you. It's possible. I did it, and that's what we want to do in this program. This program can be self-sustaining. We can absorb our own students. You graduate from college. We get you on board into our company. We can file for your papers. 
Okay, and even if we can't, we can direct you to companies that are able to do that. Okay, I know a lot of companies that you work with, we in the tech industry do placement services that can be able to sponsor you, get you papers. All you need to have is the right skills and you have to be smart. That's why you are not taking anyone who's called a C, who's called a D, who's called even a B minus. I'm not taking those people in this program. Anyone comes to the program, even if they have a first class in IT or whatever it is in college, I don't care. You have to prove yourself. You have to have a very good grades. Sometimes someone may think, oh, that's very harsh, but it's what it is. We have to be very, very careful with the kind of people that you are taking in. Because I've, I've seen this. College education is not very, very, it's not, it's, it's not very tough. Anyone, I'm telling you, I mean, I didn't, I, I always say this, like the hardest education that I went through was high school. I think a lot of you guys will, will agree with that. The, the toughest education that I went through was high school for me. Primary school was a piece of cake. I have to tell you, it was a piece of cake. Okay, high school, I really had to struggle. I really had to. Okay, I really had to. College, I was just having fun. And I still, you know, I still did well. I mean, I didn't get a first class. I got a second class upper division, but still a very good classification, right? So not bad, but still, you know, but, and, all, and then also the problem with, you know, because also with, with the universities, we don't know. There's some universities out there. They don't know how even they, they give these, you know, these kind of degrees. You know, you find someone has a first class. They can't even, you know, I don't even, I don't even want to go to that because you guys know. You guys are smart. You know all these things, right? I'm not talking to people who don't have the qualifications. You see, and I always said I get excited when I talk. I really get fascinated by smart people. I love talking to smart people because they can understand me. Okay, they get it. Like when you talk about these things, guys, you guys understand it, right? When you talk about like someone getting a first class and they can't do things and yet they scored something, you know, some mediocre grade in high school. You guys get it, right? You know, so I like, I like talking like with, with people who get it, you know, smart people who get it, not anybody out there. Okay, sometimes you won't find me talking about these things to any other kind of congregation because I know they won't really get it. Okay, when you start talking about this, oh, why are you looking at high school grades? Oh, people change, blah, blah, blah. Yes, people change still, but, you know, we, I mean, anybody can come to us and give us all kinds of stories. So to, uh, to, to get rid of all those stories, we say, hey, you know what? You must have scored at least this grade. We've seen it, that consistency. Okay, they'll do well. Okay, this is tech industry. You're gonna come, you're gonna be training you on analytics programs. Okay, machine learning, robotics, Oracle stuff. If you can't handle, I don't know you guys, whether you guys had a chance of looking, uh, watching some of the um, interview that I did with one of our students, Elsie. Okay, we talked about this, like, you know, we, we, I interviewed her, we talked about her first uh, semester here in the US, how it was, the challenges that she faced. You can hear what she, she had to say. So it's not easy. Okay, but if you're smart, you can do this. That's why we need smart people. Okay, so um, so why why analytics program? There's a lot of there's a lot of IT programs out there that anybody anybody can do. Okay, there's a lot of IT programs out there that you can come here and do actually. So there's like computer science, there's cyber security, you know, there's um, there's there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot out there. Okay, but really the main reason why we really want analytics for now is because uh, we are still, you know, the program is still young, but as we grow, we're going to keep on expanding. Um, like something like cybersecurity really interests me. Okay. So, but also see at the end of the day also, we don't just want you to come here, do your masters. We also, because we are training you on the side. And by the way, these trainings that we train you when you are, when you are, when you are here, those training programs, you can go to our website, you'll see how much we charge. Oracle program, we charge about $3,000, $2,997. That's 300,000 Kenya shillings. Robotics process automation, we charge that program, 1,497, that's 150,000 to do that program. Machine learning, the same thing. Okay, we are offering you guys almost half a million worth of training for free if in this program. 
worth half a million free of training. Okay, because I want, I want to help people. I want to help people. As long as you're smart, I really want to help you. I want you to come here. I want you to get a good job. I want you to be able to repay these loans because I know at the end of the day also, this is gonna be a lot of loans. You're talking of a lot of you guys have never taken this kind of loan before. Okay, all right. This you're talking of millions of Kenya shillings. Okay, I don't know. Not many of you have, have taken a loan of, of a million. Okay, so how do you repay? You see, we don't want just to bring you. It's not that like we are doing this blindly. We took a lot of time. I'm telling you, we came up with this program early 2018. We've been keep on improving, coming up with ideas. How do we resolve this? Because what you are trying to do is actually resolve, I mean, what you are trying to do is solve a problem that our people have. Okay, when they get here, how, I mean, how do they get here to study? So we get them money, to get them the funding in terms of loans and uh, graduate assistantship. Okay, then after that, now how do they repay these loans? How do they get good jobs? Do you just bring someone here and then just you just leave them like that? No, we don't want to do that. You see, I think you guys have heard about the, um, what do you call it? It's uh, the weak Equity Wings to Fly program, okay? They bring like brilliant, the top students in, in Kenya. Okay, I think you guys know about it. And that program, we've seen a lot of beneficiaries of, those, of that program struggling in this country. Struggling. In fact, actually, if you go to YouTube and uh, watch some of my videos, one, I mean, our Oracle videos, okay, Oracle training, the trainer in that program, that was, a, that was, that, 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 that guy uh, was a student at Yale University here. He was the second best student, Victor. His name is Victor. You, you can watch some of the videos. Victor was, be, before Victor came to our company, Victor was struggling actually to, to get, you know, to find a job, a well-paying job here in America after he had graduated. A Yale student, Yale, second best student in Kenya. And you guys, I think you heard, there was another student who committed suicide at Stanford, I think this year, for those who follow news, okay, it's because of the challenges that they face here. Okay, they come here, I've seen them, they come, they struggle, most of them, they go back to, to Kenya because they can't find jobs. They don't know how to. I'm telling you, you have to know how to find these jobs. These jobs, they don't just come to you just like that. Just because, oh, I was the best student in Kenya, I went to Harvard, I went to Stanford, they don't come like that. I'm telling you, you have to be street smart. Street smart, you have to find them. You have to do what you need to do. You have to get trained on job skills. If you just have academic qualifications, you'll never go with those academic qualifications anywhere. This is America, guys. All right, this is America. So you really need the right skills. That's what we are trying to do in this program. Hold you walk you through the same exact path that I took here in the US. I don't want you guys to struggle. I don't want you to be figuring things out. You leave it to me, we'll figure it out for you. Okay, we'll figure it out to you. By the time you graduate, you know everything. I tell you, me, I share every single information. You get here, you know everything that you need to know for you to succeed in this country. Everything, everything. How do you get a job? How do you do this? What do you need to do? How do you do this? That's what we can do if we are movement. Can you imagine like being together, all of us, smart people, like you can imagine like being like University of Nairobi, the smartest people around together in America, doing the same things in, what can we do? You think about it. What can we do? We can do amazing things, guys. Like you need to think. Like you can do amazing things. Like we are together, we are smart, we can do this. We can do amazing things. You can do amazing things as long as you have many people. That's what we want in this program. That's, what we, that's what, why we want people to keep on enrolling. Get in guys. Because I see a lot of people, they just sitting there on the fence. Oh, I don't trust the program. Oh, I, no, I think you guys, you've been, you've been on this platform for a long time. A lot, I think a lot of you also have, you know, have tried to, you know, check me out on internet and all that. 
if, if, if this program was not there, why would we be talking about the pro Why would I even waste time to be talking about these things? Then it's not like I always talk about this program. Anyways, I talk a lot about other things. I try to educate people, okay, on what they need to know before they get here in the US. I spend every day trying to create content to push out there on the internet for people to know. I write blogs, I do all this, I appear on TV and all those things because I want our people to know because I've seen the struggles a lot of people face when they come here. Okay, we need to be like these Indians. We need to be like them. Don't be satisfied by doing all these old jobs, becoming a truck driver. Nothing wrong with being a truck driver. Don't get me wrong, guys. Okay, I know we have families and friends who maybe they are, they are doing trucking here, blah, blah, blah. But it's what it is. I, I tell the truth. It's not like I, I'm disrespecting any any job out there. I have to tell you guys, if you're come as a if you're if you're coming here and you're smart, why should you be doing these jobs? I mean, why can't you go out there and work in corporate America, make six figure salary? Why do should you think it's an Indian who can be able to make that kind of money? Because sometimes we talk about six figure salaries and our people are like, oh my God, that's not me. That's someone else. Limiting beliefs that we can't do it. That's what kills us, mostly Africans. We don't think we can be able to make this kind of money. Indians are making way much more than money than a white American. Much more money than a typical white American. Hmm? Because they figured things out. They figured it out. The top IT consulting companies here in America, other than Deloitte, PwC, and a few others, most of them, it's Indian, Infosys, Accenture, Wipro, Tata Consulting, all those big, big companies. We can have our own consulting company, IT consulting company from Kenya with the smartest Kenyans that you can think of. Companies will be looking for us to implement their project. I'm telling you. Yes, I'm telling you, we will be the, we will be the Accenture, the Infosys of Africa. Anybody, even companies in Kenya, they approach us and they tell us, hey, implement our project. We implement, we are smart. We are like the smartest in the country. What can't we do? Come on. Like we are the smartest, smartest people. We have the brains, we've been trained in the US. We have everything, man. We have everything. Please guys, this program is an amazing, amazing program. Sometimes when I see people, you know, bullshitting about this program sometimes on the internet oh it's a scam oh this i feel bad because i see what we can do with this program seriously i feel i'm like i wish i wish some of these people i don't know i don't there's something wrong with with our mindset sometimes it kills me really you know you are trying to help people we are trying to show them the way but they don't even believe in you they don't believe in you because they never seen someone who is willing to help people. Because we are not used to helping each other. We are used to putting down everybody. Okay, but we need to change. We need to change. DMK is with me on this. This guy is one of the best performing MCAs. We don't, it's not just any, any politician out there. I'm gonna tell you guys, really. He's one of the best performing MCA. The best, he's doing his PhD. How many MCAs will here having a PhD? How many of them? This guy also scored a B plus. It's not like you're in this program with, you know, dada heads. No, we are all smart people. The guy scored a B plus, he has a, he's doing a PhD. Okay, this is not your typical politician from Kenya. He's someone who can see. In fact, actually, a lot of work in this program is his own brains. Seriously, when he partnered with me, we didn't even have anything to do with SACO and all those things. He brought up those ideas. So he thinks bigger, he look at the bigger picture. That's why we are working with him. I don't, work with, I don't deal with politics, I'm telling you guys, I don't care about politics, to be honest with you. All you want is to help people. And when DMK reached out to me and he heard about what I do here, and he told me, Bob, I want to work with you. I want to bring people in, 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 in America. And I listened to him. I could get it. I was like, this guy, I want to work with him. He's smart and he's visionary. It's not all about politics. 
Okay, you need to have people, you need those kind of leaders who can see far, not here, because that's what a lot of our people see. Okay, that's really what we are trying to achieve in this program, guys. That's what we are trying to achieve in this program. Okay, that's really what we want to, to achieve. Now, um, so I've talked about why analytics program, okay? And you can clearly see, you know, data analysts, business analysts, one of the most in-demand job. I'm telling you, we are doing this because we know we in the tech industry, man, here in the US, that's what we do here. We know the kind of demand that is here. All you need to do is have the right skills. You can't go wrong with IT. We, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. This is the fourth industrial revolution. It's all about artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science. All right? This is why you need to be, if you really want to be in tech industry, this is the space that you want to be in. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, it's all about artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, big data and stuff like that. Okay. All right, that's where you want to be. That's where we want, that's where you want to be. You don't want to be left behind. I'm telling you, you have those qualifications. You're gonna be enjoying. You're gonna be making really good money. Really good money, I'm telling you guys. Really good, you know, you're not gonna struggle in this America. You won't be like a lot of people here. You won't, you won't. You just need to listen, follow what you are saying, because I've been there, I've faced the problems, the challenges, I know. I know how hard it is. You are basically walking you, walking you, you through the path that I took. You don't have to struggle like, I, like the way I struggled. You know, you don't have to stay here without any papers. And you guys, you've had like a lot of, maybe you have family, friends back home, they've never even be, been to Kenya since they came here. They've been here maybe 10 years, 20 years. They, they've never been there. What do you th why do you think they don't come back? Do you think they don't love you guys? They don't want to come? Hmm? It's because they don't have the papers. No one will tell you those things when you're in Kenya. They don't have the papers. If they left, they can't go back. Even if someone dies back home, they can't. It's an unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in in this country. That's what we want to fix. You come through the Kenya Lift program, you, you will make sure that you can be able to get your papers, you get good jobs, you go back home. If someone passes away, you go home. If someone gets a wedding, you go home, you can come back, you can afford their tickets. That's what we want. Not struggling here, you can't get home, you can't do this, you can't, because you don't have the papers. Okay, we don't want anyone coming through the Kenya Lift program to be struggling. Because that's what you are trying to fix. See, these things, you guys, you never know these things. No one will tell you. No one. No one. People will be there telling you, oh, come to America. Oh, this, this, this. Oh, come to a, I don't know, what do, come to a conference. Oh, come and visit. And then boom, you come here and then you are stuck. You won't get out of this country for the next 20 years. I'm telling you. You know, things are tough. And even the, 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 you know, we hope, you know, we hope the current administration won't be there next year. But if then if they are, we have to, we can't just sit there and, you know, keep on complaining. Oh, things are getting tough. We have to figure out how do we resolve these problems? You know, we can't just sit there and, you know, keep on complaining. Oh, our people, they don't have the papers. Oh, our people, they don't have good jobs. Why not come up with something, solutions, and fix, fix it? work as a team work as people you'll be able to get somewhere that's what you are trying to achieve in this program it's a very visionary program i hope you guys have been able to see the bigger picture of what this program is all about what you are really trying to achieve okay i can see there's a lot of um uh questions on the chat and a lot of information there i'll go through that okay in a short in a short while okay now i said treat your M msc or whatever analytics program as a prime investment. Okay, it's a lot of money you guys are taking. Okay, if we could, we could get you a scholarship, full scholarship, but it's very hard. 
I get also a lot of there's that misconception when a lot of people get reach out to me and they say, hey Bob, I heard about you as scholarship. We don't offer scholarships, it's basically graduate assistantship awards plus international student loans. Okay. So there's that, you know, people, you know, sometimes people just want to hear about scholarships. But it's very hard to find scholarships, guys. Very, very hard. Because they're usually merit based. Okay. But you can't just just because you can't get a scholarship doesn't mean that you can't come to America. You have to find a way. Okay, how, not, how do I get there now? Okay, and not just come here. Now, if I get a loan, how can I repay this loan? Remember I told you guys, like I know a lot of you guys, you've never taken millions in terms of loans. But don't be scared because we are trying to figure out why, how you can be able to repay this loan. Now, one thing that you need to know is this. These lenders, they don't lend just anybody out there on the streets. Okay, when they underwrite these loans, they know, they know that these guys that they are giving these loans, these are people who are more likely to get a job. That's why they don't even like, for example, Prodigy Finance, they don't just, they don't even just give anybody. Let's say, for example, you come here, you want to do uh, an MBA at uh, University of South Florida here in Tampa. They won't give you the loan. I'm just giving an example. Okay, why? Because that program can be done by anybody. That's not a program for, for smart people. I did an MBA, an MBA can have all kinds of people. This, that's, that's, that's the truth. Anybody can do an MBA. Okay, so they know they are not that stupid to give, to dish out money to anybody. So they, they partner with specific programs. And one of them is analytics because they know those who can do analytics, those guys are smart. It's not, your, it's not just anybody out there, anyone there who can do analytics. No. And now, smart people are more likely to get a job. It's what it is. Smart people are more likely to be employed. You know, it's quite obvious. But sometimes it doesn't look that obvious to a lot of people out there. So these guys, they know if they give you a $5 million loan, they know that you are more likely to repay because you, you're going to come here, study, a very marketable degree, and you are more likely to get a job. And these schools that we partner with, those schools are very good schools. They may not be the Harvard, the Yale, the Princeton, the uh, whatever. You don't have to go to those schools, okay, to have a good job. Okay, I went to a very small school, by the way, it's called Indiana University of Pennsylvania. You have one of our guys there, okay. But anyways, that's not the point. But anyways, so, so these schools, they are usually good schools. These are state universities, most of them. Others, they are like private ones, but good ones also. But these schools, they partner with these schools. They don't just go to any school out there because they know there's more likelihood of getting a smart person in those schools. Okay, because like, for example, there's a lot of schools out there. They don't even ask anything about GMAT. In our program, in the schools that we work with, most of them, they ask a GMAT of around 550. If you are 550, you are, you are safe. Okay, so, so a, lot, a lot of schools out there, because the U.S. has like thousands and thousands of universities, thousands and thousands of universities. There's a lot of universities out there. They don't even ask for this GMAT. There are also a lot of universities out there which are way much cheaper than what we have. But you can't go to those universities because those universities, they don't partner with these lenders. These lenders, they know. They know that a school that is easy to get will attract all kinds of people. They won't have smart people. So you do want to lend someone who is not smart, who's going to end up, uh, you know, not paying your loan. No. That's why they are giving loans to, to the smartest. That's why in our program, we don't ex accept anybody, just anybody out there. You have to be smart. Prove yourself. Come to the program. Get a 550. If you don't get a 550, you're not smart enough. You cannot come here. You have to. All right. You have to get a 550. That's how you can prove yourself. Otherwise, you can't come here because you're going to be in the IT industry, an analyst, what, what, whatever we train you on the side as you pursue here. These are very tough uh, programs to do. So you have to prove yourself. You can't prove yourself in a GMAT of high school math and English. Come on. You're not good. Okay. It's what it is. Okay. We are dealing with smart people here. You prove yourself. You come here. You do what you are supposed to do. You're going to be fine. You're going to have a good job. You graduate, you get a good job. You get the papers, you'll be set. You can go to Kenya, wherever you want to go. Go, come back, 
you can afford any tickets, anything. If you have family back home, you can come here, finish school, get a job, then bring your family. Those are some of the sacrifices that some of us have to do, you know? But don't bring your family here as a student because I also get a lot of people asking me, oh, I need to bring my wife, I need to... Well, I know, I know it's family, you want to bring them here, you want to be with them, but I'm telling you, it's very, very tough. It's very costly here. That's also why we tell you guys, I can't, I can't accept anybody to come here without nothing. Okay, we want to help you, but at the end of the day, you guys need to find some, something, at least for the first six months, who knows? Uh, if this corona found you here and you didn't have nothing, what could happen? You can't go begging money on the streets in America. You don't have any family here. So you, you guys need to, to really understand why we're asking you to have something. And you getting 450,000 Kenya shillings, that's not a lot of money, guys. Don't think, because I see a lot of us, we have some limit, limiting beliefs. Oh, I can't trust. We've been conditioned, we've been conditioned to be poor. We've been conditioned to be poor. I see a lot of people, people spend money on crazy stuff. You can even sell even your land, get money, tell them I'm gonna repay you after five years. I'll buy you another land. I'm telling you, this is an investment. When I got a job, I was able to buy a land. I was able to build for my grandparents. I was brought, I, was, I grew up with my grandparents. I was able to build them a house the first year. You can do those things. Tell them to sell their land and put you in the program. Come on. I mean, you, everything is getting taken care of. You're talking of millions of Kenya shillings. You can't get everything for free. Come on. If, it was the, if everything was for free, then you start saying, oh, it's too good to be true. <laughs> because if I still hear some people say, it's too good, the program is too good to be true. I mean, there's nothing too good here. You have to, you know, you have to really, you know, be what we want. It's not just for anybody. It's nothing too good to be true here. I tell what it is. You come, I tell you, hey, you know what? You need some money also. That's, very, that's a very small amount to be worrying about. You're gonna have a whole year to figure out where to get the 450 from. Come on, do an Arambe. Call your church, every elders, anybody in the village. Keep on raising the money every month and raise the 450. Don't come and start telling me, oh, I can't raise 450. Come on, you are not serious. If you can't raise 450, then you should not even be thinking of coming to America. It's what it is. It's what it is, guys. I'm telling you, as much as we want to help everybody, you have to understand these things. And that's why I always, me, I always say that what it is. I tell you the truth. You know, a lot of people, they don't want to hear the truth, right? They want, to, they want you to lie to them. Okay, you tell them the truth, they start complaining. Oh, Bob, you told them, that's not, that's not a nice thing that you told them. Oh, because I remember I even told someone on, in the group that, hey, if you don't have, if you can't afford, then you can't come, which is the truth. Me, I tell the truth. I respect everybody, but I have to tell you what it is. I don't, I don't like sugarcoating things. I tell you exactly what it is. It's better you know it. Okay, so come on, 450, really? That can stop you from coming to America. What if you're asking you to pay 2 million? What if, you know, even if you get a full scholarship, even like those who get a scholarship from like Equity Bank, they still have to find money to stay here. You have to find money to pay your air ticket. When you take America, Adi, even if someone gives you a full ride scholarship, how will you come to America if you can't raise 150,000 air ticket? How? Come on. It's what it is. Right? So figure out where to get that money. Don't just say there's, oh, I can't afford 450. It's a whole year. Talk to your family, sell land, sell, sell goats, sell cows. You'll repay them. To give, tell them, give me five years, I'll pay your money. If it's possible. Take this as an investment. Take this, I'm telling you, this is a prime investment. That's how you need to look at it. Okay, that's how you need to look at it. You are basically investing about 5 million Kenya shillings and you are getting, you know, on average, this amount of money every year, you know. You know, it's an investment. It's an investment. So guys, think about that. Don't sit there and start, you know, 
that's that's what kills us a, a lot of times. Me, I don't understand people sometimes. So what what else would you want? You know, I mean, we can still we'll keep on improving the program. That's why we, we want people, guys. You guys, we want you to be in the program. Don't just sit there and watch us and then oh oh you know what I'm gonna join whatever. Join now. What are you waiting for? Join now. Start. This is this Corona time is the best time to 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 start. We even lowered this. Time. Initially, we wanted you can. We, we had said you can only join the program if you have 100,000. We, we, we said now pay 20,000, join, and then pay the rest slowly, slowly, slowly as you, as you study for your GMAT. What else do you want? Seriously. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very hard for us to, you know, you know, as much as we really want everybody to join the program, okay, right? Still, at the end of the day, there are some things that there are some costs that you really have also to incur. I've told you guys, we are even giving you free training here, worth half a million Kenya shillings for free. Because we don't want just you guys to just come here and have academic um, uh, qualifications only. No, that's not going to be enough. Okay. If you go to any agency out there that tries to bring people Maju, you know how much they charge. Do you know how much they charge? Do you know as we make money as a company, $600, about $500 after you've gotten the visa? You don't get the visa, I, we cannot even make any money, even after all this effort. You think about that. Do you know how much agencies charge? You go do your own research in Kenya and see. You will see how much value this program has. This program has. We charge $500. After you've gotten the visa, you don't get the visa, we don't get any money. Nothing, zero. The only money we get from you is we have $100 that we charge as registration. Because also we want you, we can't just, you know, we want people who are serious about this whole thing. Okay, right? So that's the only, and that covers the books and all these things. That's basically our expenses. We, we don't make anything until you get a visa. So I have to make sure that you are getting those visas, guys. I caught you. I've been denied visa, I've told you. I've been denied visa many times. I know the tricks. I mean, I, it's not like I, it's, it's guaranteed that you can get a visa, but I know exactly what is needed at the embassy. I know it. Okay, so far, none of our people have been denied, but also it's because we are dealing with a very small sample. Okay? But you have to try... I get a lot of people asking me like, oh, is it guaranteed that I'll get here? No, it's not guaranteed. Who can guarantee you to get here? No. You can't be guaranteed. We can't guarantee you loans. We can't guarantee you visas. We can't guarantee anything. That's what it is. You deal with risks. Even the circle itself, you are lending you money. You are risking to give you 300,000 Kenya shillings. What if you come here and then you disappear? Where will you get our money back? Come on, guys. Think. You guys are smart. Don't think like those people out there who are just, you no, know, they don't think, they don't, you know, they don't critically think about things. They just take anything on the fly. Right? You come here and we've given you 300,000 Kenya shillings. So you, you think, your money, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, it's a scam. Maybe, you know, I'm going to lose my money. I'm going to lose my 20,000. Come on, man, 20,000 Kenya shillings. What about us? We are giving you 300,000. <laughs> Seriously, come on, people. You know, I, I don't understand sometimes. You know, people are crazy. You know, you guys, I want you guys to think differently. That's how I think, man. And that's how DMK thinks as well. If we didn't think differently, we wouldn't be having this kind of a program. I'm telling you. All right. All right, guys. Let me read the... the, the I see a lot of you guys write the, the, the stuff here. I'm going to be reading them and answering them. So, okay, let me read this. Okay. Okay, someone asked uh, Grace, uh, hey, Bob, a quick question. Is there a school you are collaborating with in Kansas or Texas? Maybe you could list the schools as we go on. Thanks. Now, um, now, at the moment, the, school, the only schools that we have is the ones in our, in our handbook. And the reason is we're going to keep on expanding this list, okay? And 
another thing that I want to tell you guys, don't be limited. Even if you know anybody who, who is here in the US, right? And maybe they can give you accommodation and things like those. Still join the program. If we find a school that is in, let's say, for example, you want a school in Kansas or Texas, okay? And we find one that partners with these lenders because at the end of the day, you need the lender anyways. That's the whole, you know, you can't, we can't just take you to any school. It has to be a school that is partnering with, with the lenders because how, how will you be able to get a loan, okay? Because graduate assistantship is not enough. You are not even assured of it if you don't do well in GMAT. That's also another thing that you need to know. But at least, you know, you need, you need, we need a school, okay? We need a school that is partnering with the lenders so that if you get it, then you can be able to, you can be able to get, to, to get the, the funding. Okay, so join the program. If we find a school, that's fine. But that should not limit you from joining the program. Okay, we are still always flexible. If you find a school somewhere and you are still in IT, why not? You know, why not? I'm loving this black and white deliberation. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for identifying the gap and your effort to bridging, to bridging it. Thank you so much, Stanley Kasembeli. Edwin Kostgay. Hi, Bob. Thanks for these great news. I crazily need this program. <laughs> I did my GPA and it's 3.28, meaning I qualify. I graduated with a BSc Actuarial Science. Oh my God, these are guys who we want. Man, I get excited when I talk to smart people. I'm telling you guys, you can see my excitement and all that. It's because I'm dealing with smart people. You know? Yes, Stanley. Raised his hand. You can ask a question, Stanley. You can just type another question. I'll be able to read. Uh, my challenge will be to get the 420K, but I do what it takes. We talked about the 420. Don't be limited, guys. Edwin, come on. Okay, Edwin sent me privately. Don't be limited by that, okay? You guys have heard me talk about it. That one will be one year later. Focus now about raising the, the, the money that is needed now. That one... You know, your clan, your village, your, your friends, your church, sell something. 420 is nothing. <laughs> okay, Edwin, something else. Do we have timelines for joining the program like some years after graduation? No, we always say this. Um, you know, you can join the program even your last year of education because it takes a whole year for this whole process. Okay, so as long as you're in your last year of your undergraduate, just join. Just join in it. Don't watch, man. Just join. Right now is the best time. Once the, this corona thing opens, it's going to open. This is not going to stay like this, guys. It opens up and then we start now the application to schools. Don't wait. You know, you sit there and start blaming corona for everything. Come on. Me, I don't like people who just, you know, keep on coming with all kinds of, you know, just about the program and just, any, just anything out there. Okay, you have to be on the move. Don't blame the corona and all that. Okay, let me answer another question. Someone else, something else. Okay, I've answered that. I feel that energy, Bob, feeling like to join you immediately. Please join. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. Yeah, man, I get, I get excited when I talk to, you know, smart people, you know, you know, I can I can work with smart people, man. I got I get frustrated, and and especially in the tech industry. Okay, if you work with people, don't get it. You get frustrated. You can't do anything. You can't. I'm telling you, it's crazy. But when I have smart people, they can solve things. Man, you can do amazing things. I'm telling you. I love it. I love it when I see, and especially someone who is smarter than me. Okay, someone, someone who is smarter than me, than me. Yeah, I like it. I love it, man. I love it. I want to help anybody who is smart out there. There's a lot of opportunities here. Now, there's also someone who asked me about, you know, the situation with racism and stuff like that. Now, guys, racism, it's, it's, it's not something that is almost everywhere, you know, like, you know, not just in the US, you know, you go to Europe, you know, East Europe, and all. there's some countries out there, by the way, as a black person, you know, you go there and then people will be looking at you like, hey, you know, you've seen it also in, uh, you know, China, but one, one thing, and this is, this is something that I've seen, I mean, and as a, as a black person, you really have to know, you know, you really, you really have to expect these things sometimes, okay, I mean, I mean don't, don't, don't worry too much, Okay, you know, most of the time, as I've seen, even like 
you know, everywhere. You know, black person, you are always looked at in a very, not a very nice way. It's what it is. Me, I always say things the way that you are. Okay. You know, the moment you realize that, that that's what it is, you won't be bugged by all these things. I'm telling you, I've been here for almost 11 years. I've never seen, I've never really been, you know, treated in a very racist way, to be honest. I, nothing that I can remember of. Okay, unless one, I think one, one time I went to a club with my friends and they were even Indians. And I was, the club had like three floors and there's one floor that they wanted to get my Indian friends. They got in and then the guy refused me to get in. Okay, so I thought maybe it's because I'm black, you know, and I, you know, I complain and all that, but those are just one in a million times. Okay, that should not stop you. Come on, man. I keep, I said, even I told, I said in the, in the group that in Kenya, we have our own uh, tribalism, you know? Oh, oh, you can't work with this person from this, this area. Oh, who you name Kisi, who you name Jaluo, who you name Meru. In fact, actually, there are a lot of people out there, they won't even join this program because I'm a Meru. <laughs> it's true. Oh, because this guy is from Mount Kenya. Come on, guys. I don't care where you're from. You can be from us, you can be from wherever, as long as you're smart. You know, I'm okay with you. Me, I don't, I'm a, I don't care about these things, guys. Okay, right? And let something like racism stop you. Okay, all right. And you come here, you know what you want. Come on, man, you're coming here to make money. Money, man, money, 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 money. You come here, you know what you need to do back home. You have people that you need to help. You're not coming here to just, you know, a lot of Africans, they come here and then they become something else. You know, you, they get into drugs, they get into all this because there's a lot of things that can disrupt you here. A lot of our people, no one tells you, a lot of them, they are doing nothing. You know, come here focused. That's what we have in this program, man. You are, we are focused people. We don't want people who are gonna come here and then they, they don't want to do anything, they don't want to work, they don't want to do anything, they keep on complaining. If you're that kind of a person, don't get into the program. We're gonna make you work here in this program. Really, you have to work, you have to do a job. You have to start off with the GMAT. If you can't do GMAT, don't even get into the program. Because I get a lot of people, oh, I don't want to do GMAT, blah, blah, blah. You have to do GMAT, guys. Okay, let's see the questions again. Stanley, so both my questions, God forbid, in case you are incapacitated. <laughs> I, I like these questions, by the way. Keep on asking them. You know, there, there's no stupid question. I don't pray to lose you. How will those so much dependent on your assistance or on job training and funding make it? What current plans are there to guarantee sustainability of the program? <clears throat> Now, I, I get you, I get you. And um, this is something that I also think about a lot, right? Um, I don't want to be a one man show, all right? Um, I also have a team here. I work with, I mean, my company, I have uh, someone else also who work with me. And also on the Kenyan side, we have DMK. So, um, so we wanna make sure that, you know, this is a program that can, still can continue, all right? So, and as we keep on growing, we don't have to depend on Bob. Okay, we have all the systems in place so that you don't have to depend on someone, you know? So, so those things, those are the little things. Again, these are the things that we have to, we can only fix some of these things when you grow. You guys, you need to help us grow. That's all we're asking. Get into the program. Get into the program. We start even giving ourselves loans. We don't have to worry about external lenders. We need about 10,000 people. Get in. Get in, we'll be able to self-sustain ourselves in the program. We, if we get, we do, you guys don't even need to get jobs outside of Upstate America. We get you inside, we get you in as consultants, we work for our company, we file for your papers, we don't have to look for other companies. That's how this program can sustain itself. We become big. As you get in, we're gonna be having people who need to work for us. People who need to do a lot of work for the program, those who are coming from Kenya, you finish your school, we get you on board, you start working for us, we'll fight for your papers. That's how it's gonna, that, that, that's what we want. That's why we need the numbers. Okay, so you guys need to believe in us. You need to believe in us, you need to get into the program, we need the numbers. We don't get the numbers, we can't sustain ourselves, we can still get into the program, we get you here, we get you loans and all that, we get you jobs, but still, 
it's not self-sustaining. Okay, so so we need those numbers. We can we don't need any we don't need external lenders. We can be lending ourselves in the circle at very low interest rate, very very low, low. Okay, so it's possible. Okay, all we need is numbers. People need to believe in us. Okay, you guys go out there, spread the gospel, man. Talk about this program. Let people join. Tell your friends. You guys come from universities where you have like 50, 100 people. You have WhatsApp groups. Tell them. Tell them about this program. Give them the link to the Kenya Airlift program. Our problem with our people is we don't like sharing this information. That's the problem with Africans. Okay. Tell people to join. That's how we can be able to grow together. We need numbers. We need numbers in the program. Okay, but we have to start from somewhere though. So, so those are the things that, you know, I think about all these things, but um, yeah, we, we, we get in, we, more people we get, the better, gets more merrier, you know? So let me see another question. What current plans are there to guarantee sustainability? I think I've talked about that. If I make it fast 20K contribution to the circle, can I be issued GMAT materials so that in two months I sit for the test and apply admission by? Well, uh, when you make the first installment, <clears throat> um, then we'll provide you with materials. We'll give you access to our training portal, okay? Then um, we also uh, ship out the materials to you. Uh, then now you start studying. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to pass in three months. Uh, but before we book you for the exam, you have to finish paying 100,000. Okay, exam, exam itself is 25,000 Kenya shillings. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, can, can one consider moving with his or our immediate family, spouse, kids to the US? Let's say after a couple of months. I, I think I talked about this earlier. Uh, if you have a family, please make your family understand this. It's very, very expensive here in the US. Don't bring your family, come alone. Leave your wife, your kids, or your husband and kids. They'll come later. These are some of the sacrifices that you have to make if you really have to, if you really want to come here. Okay, don't come with your spouse. And also even at the embassy, you're gonna be required to provide um, you know, evidence that you can take care of your family. Even the school for you to get the I-20. Okay, so where are you gonna show that money from? Okay, when you, come with, when you come with your family here, they can't walk. They're gonna be sitting there every day when you go to school. Those are some of the sacrifices that we have. Sometimes we make this complicated. Make them understand. Okay. <laughs> so like I'm against families, you know, some, some people would be like, oh, Bob doesn't care about families. No, 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 I do. I do a lot. I'm a family guy. Okay. I really am. <clears throat> and um, yeah, just come here, get to school, finish what you're su supposed to do, get a job, get a job, bring them. They're going to come on a, on a work visa. They can work on your own. A spouse visa for someone who is working here. They can work also. Okay, yeah, but don't br bring all the baggage with you. You're gonna be, it's gonna be very tough. This is this country is very very expensive. It's not like Kenya. So Harry, um, I have heard about nurse issue several, <laughs> several. I thought was racist. At least now I know it's an scale issue. Say something about racism. I think I've talked about it, right? Um, and nursing. Yep, that's what we that's what we do here. Okay, guys. Okay. And guys, understand, there's nothing wrong with being a nurse, okay? I don't want people to be out there saying, oh, Bob was saying, oh, nurses, blah, 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 blah. Me, I say what it is, okay? I want you guys, and I want you guys to be nurses. I want you guys to be IT consultants, all right? IT consultants, very nice job. Very nice job making some really good money. Really, when I talk of good money, I mean good money. Pesa, Missouri, Missouri, good money. It's not like... You don't have to do double shifts for you to make money, I'm telling you, all right? You're gonna be like these Indians. If you want to buy a Mercedes Benz, you can buy. If you're someone, if you're someone who likes flying like that, okay? You don't have to struggle. If you want to buy whatever you want to buy, you can buy because you have it. Treat yourself nice, okay? You can only do that if you have the money, come on. I don't know. You know, you know, we've been brought up with those beliefs about money. Oh, money is the root of all evil. Oh, money. I don't know what. Money is not happiness. I'm telling you, don't listen to those things. When you start hearing about those, it's for poor people. Poverty will make you think bad about money. 
There is all those misconceptions about money. Oh, money is the root cause of all evil. Oh, money is this, 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 this. No, money can do a lot for you. You can do a lot for your family back in Kenya. You can do a lot for yourself. You can go on vacations to places that a lot of people can't go and that's because of money. Come on. Don't think like that. A lot of our people, they think, oh, oh money, money, money. Oh, I don't want, they don't even want to talk about money. Come on, guys. Okay, of course, you still need health. I mean, humanity care about three things, money, health, and relationships. Three things. Money is one of them. Okay. Because we, we grew up being told, oh, oh, don't you, you no, no one even talks about money. You know, in our, in our, you know, the way we grew up, you know, be, oh, don't talk about money. Oh, this, this, this. And people have a negative perception of about people who are rich, unfortunately. Most of the time they think that you are rich, it's because you took some money from someone. That's what a lot of people have. That poor people's mentality. I'm telling you, that poor people's mentality. They think that people are, who have been successful is because they stole money from somebody, they scammed somebody, they, they made someone poor for them to have the money. That's how most a lot of human beings are. They see you successful, they, they come, you get more haters, by the way. When you look like you are financially successful, you get more haters. You get more people who don't like you. Not many will like you, I'm telling you, when they start seeing that you are being successful. Be prepared. <laughs> okay, because I can see you guys becoming successful in this country. You just need to follow what we are saying. You just need to, guys, do your own research and look at Indians, what they do here. You're going to know. Stop listening to us Africans. Listen, see what these Indians are doing here. You'll see amazing stuff. Indians in America, they are the, like the Indians in Kenya. You see the way the Indians in Kenya, they have money. That's the way they are here. Ah, and they kwa manyumba mzuri, nice cars, nice everything. They live in the best neighborhoods. Okay, they in the best jobs. Out of pata kwa nursing homes. Out of pata muindi kwa nursing home. You think about that. That's how you have an MBA. I mean, you have a Master of Science in Analytics and Information Systems. You have to do because they are nursing. Come on. We need to stop it. Okay. <laughs> There's someone. You have to do for 6 to 10 million a year. Well, see, when you, here, when you graduate, you make about, about $60,000 per year. That's 6 million. That's what I meant. Okay, that's your salary, six million Kenya shillings a year. It may sound be like a lot, but it's still good money. Not a lot of people can make that kind of money. I'm telling you, not many people can make that kind of money. A lot of people have been in this country for years and years. They can't make that. Let that sink in. Okay, so this is an investment. You're investing five million, okay, on average. Okay, of course, you're gonna, get graduate assistantship. You come here, you do well in school, you're gonna get graduate assistantship every year. You need to be doing well. And then your loan, maybe, maybe spend about that thousand dollars, three million. That's an investment. It's like buying a matatu of three million. Tulikuwa na matatu uko Kenya at some point. It didn't go well. <laughs> okay. It's like getting, you know, you're, you're being, you're making an investment. Which you almost you it's it's all up it's all up to you what you're gonna do once you are here, you know you're gonna shape your path. You know I invested three million. What do I need to do? I just need someone to show me. We show you the way. You're gonna do it. Okay, you're gonna do it. But still, not everybody can be successful. It doesn't mean that just anybody who comes through the program they can be successful. There are other people who even if you give them everything they won't succeed. So. That's possible. We are not saying like everybody will, you know, will be successful. No, there are people, even if you give them everything, you put them there, they still find a way of screwing things up. Okay, I'm telling you, there are people out there, you can tell them, you give them $20, you tell them, okay, sell this $20 for $5. They won't even sell it. They will still find a way of screwing it. They can't sell $20 for $5. They won't be able to. You know, you have to sell yourself, man. You have to sell, have the skills, go out there. Let the employers know that you're, you know, you have the skills. We're going to help you get out there and get a job. Okay. 
I mean, I can still help you, show you the way, but it, it doesn't mean that Bob will gonna be, you know, hold, you know, carrying you on my back all the time, you know. We, that's why we need people who are focused. If you're not focused in this program, here I want you because you're gonna try here. Okay, excellent work, Bob. This is the AI. Thank you. Uh, please clarify on the necessity of having a Kenyan driving license before you. Ah, when you come here, I'm telling you, you're gonna have to do your driving here. Okay, so I think it's good to have an international driver's license. You need to know how to drive also, please, if you, if you want. Um, if, you, if you're coming here, make sure that you know how to drive because also here in the US, driving is more like, it's, that's, it's like a necessity, okay? But before you get here, we normally tell our students to get the international driver's license. Your Kenyan driver's license would get you anywhere before, because once you get here, you may need to use a car, maybe rent or something, but with, the, with an international driver's license, you can be able to do that. But you can't have it for long, okay? So once you come here, you still have to get a driving um, license from your whatever state that you'll be, okay? <clears throat> and you, most likely you're gonna fail. I failed two times driving here. And I used to be a good driver back in Kenya for about five years. So it's one of those things that, America, they do things differently. You know, Nakujoku you, with your own kimbelembele from Kenya, you know, driving like this and putting your sausage outside, you call it sausage, this part, <laughs> you know? And then driving like a matatu, you're gonna, you're gonna be, they're gonna fail you. So I failed two times. I learned from those, so those are the little things that I'm gonna be giving you guys tips I mean, in this program. I'm telling you, some of these small things, you may not appreciate them now, but once you get here, you guys will know. Excellent job, Bo work, Bob. Um, okay, I think I'll try. Bob, are GMATs ongoing at this time? Yeah, GMATs, but online, we don't want you guys to do online because when you do the online GMAT, <clears throat> there's one part of it that is not, um, is not tested. So we want, when everything opens up, then you guys are gonna go to the GMAT center and do it at the center, okay? But there's, a, there's the online option at this time. Okay, Festus, could you please tell us more about a certain guy gig you once mentioned in the Telegram group that can help us raise the 450? Now, um, again, I don't want people to really depend on that because also that's some online gigs and um, right now it's, it's, it's for transcribing, okay? You, you watch videos and then you, you write, you transcribe it. Uh, like right now with all this corona thing, it's, it's very hard to find these online jobs. So I don't want you to rely on that. Okay, that's more of like, a, you know, something that to fall back on in case of anything. So you guys need to raise, figure out where to raise your own money. I've told you guys, there's a lot of, a lot of means of raising that 450. That's not a lot of money, guys. Come on, it's not a lot. Don't think it's a lot of money, that's nothing. You can raise it. Okay, you can. That's not a lot of money, trust me. If we are talking of millions, yes, but that's that's Pesa Kidogo Sana. So Honorable DMK, I salute you and Bob. Thank you so much, Stanley. Uh, we are able to make a hell lot of difference. Yes, we can. That's innocent, uh, Humphrey. Racism is like tribalism. Yes, exactly, that's what I say. Don't, don't let that limit you to come here, okay? All right, guys, don't. You won't experience it that much, um, really. Okay, and all you need to do is just know who you are, what you want, okay? If you are stopped by the cops, don't go arguing with them. You know you're a black person, you can be short. So, just, they ask you for something, give them and just go. I've been asked, I've been stopped by the cops many times. We are even discussing with a few of my Kenyan buddies that, you know, from here in Tampa the other day. And we were saying like, me, I mean, we've been stopped many times. You've had tickets, driving tickets. You never get in trouble. You talk to the cop nicely. You won't, they won't even give you the ticket, I'm telling you. Okay, I know, I know what African Americans have gone through. Sometimes we don't even get it because we've never been through the slavery. But we need to, we need to, we need to, you know, we, we need to just know who we are, what we came here to do. Leave the rest. Those other shenanigans are tananazo. Where fanya kazi yako to, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, when, when you have money, some of these things actually, they, they won't. Uh, see, when you are living in a nice neighborhood, you know, 
when you're making good money, you are living in a nice neighborhood, you won't have these kind of problems, you know? You won't be somewhere where there's gangs and all those things in ghettos and stuff like that. Okay, so that's why you need to focus, focus, make good money. You won't be having those problems. I'm telling you, live in a nice neighborhood. You'll be okay. Um, but of course, you can't really, you know, there's, you know, it can happen. That's what I see, you know. No, no, no community, no, no, no one is perfect. No country is perfect out there, okay? But the U.S. is a very nice country. That's why a lot of people want to come here. Okay, another one. Do you already have a partner companies that are willing to absorb us, those who have graduated second? Where would you love to see yourself as upstack in the next five years? We would love to be big, 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 biggest consulting firm, African consulting firm here in the U.S. And that's why we need you guys. I keep on saying we really need you guys. Um, that's where I want to see our company going. You know, we want to be big so that we can be able to absorb people. As far as, um, you know, um, partnership with companies willing to absorb, there's a lot of companies. We do placement services here in the U.S., okay? A lot of companies out there they are willing to take in people as long as you're smart. You just need the skills. Don't worry about that. That's what we do here. We're going to make sure. We're going we're gonna to help you guys. We are here to help you. We are here to make you get a job. You have our money, remember? We're going to make sure that you get that job and start paying back. We don't want you to. <laughs> we don't want you guys to, you know, to 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 default our loans, right? So you have, you have to make sure that you guys get a job. From the website, there are people who scored less than five hundred. Zima, how did they get? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. There are some people who scored less than five hundred in our website. Yes, that's true. But those two guys, those guys, they they are paying for their education. Sasa kama kuna pesa. If you have the millions, even if you get three hundred, that's fine. You don't have to get 500, but you need to be smart, right? At the end of the day, they scored B pluses, A minus. So they are still smart guys, but they could pay for their education or they need that. We give them the money from the circle, but the rest, they are able to take care of it. They are getting graduate assistantship and the rest, they don't need the loan. So if you don't need the loan, it's not like everybody needs a loan really, right? So if you are someone like that and, but again, the reason for 550 is because of the schools that we partner with, they need that. If you don't get that, then you can't get to those schools. You can, you see one of some, like for example, uh, Tim, who scored a 400. That was the first, actually the first student in the program. He went to the school that I went to, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. That school doesn't even partner with our lender. It's a very small school. It's not a good school, okay? It's not really a very good school. It's not a good school. So, but if you want, yeah, you can go to a school like that, but still, you still have to do IT. You know, for team, we, are, we accepted at that time to do an MBA. So the first time it was first person. So, but we don't want that. We don't want you to be struggling here finding jobs with an MBA. We need IT. I hope I've answered. 550 is needed by the schools, not us. The schools need it. But if you have the money to go to any other school and pay for yourself, why not? You can get anything that you want as long as the school doesn't accept you know okay they're okay with it about the 100k grace jenga how many installments am i allowed to pay in? can you reduce it to 10 no we can't reduce to 10k come on see even like some of these things like you know books and you know all those things no 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 we can't reduce to 10k you, it has to be 20. in fact actually for us even to put it at 20 we are very lenient we just want at least people to afford okay 20k guys 10k no 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 10k you don't make a time <laughs> no we can't allow that okay yeah 20k at least <clears throat> okay someone i have a degree in, in international relations can i make it you can make it as long as you have the right um see there's a lot of not many people have it backgrounds okay so what we are trying to do also is once you are done with your gmat you try to now start getting you into some it courses like Python, R, all those, okay, before you get here, okay? So don't worry about your background, okay? You can still make it. You just, you get the right GMAT score. The rest will figure out. That's all I can tell you. GMAT is usually the challenge in this program. Uh, Grace Jeng, I like your positive energy, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Stanley, I'm, I'm already satisfied with this deliberation. It's time to act. I'm making my contribution soon. Yes, guys, please, 
I don't know what you guys are waiting for. This is an amazing program. If you have something somewhere, just put in. Come on, put in. Get in. Get in. Let's roll. That's what we want. Okay, tribalism is a killer disease. Racism is not an issue for me. <laughs> That's the mindset that I want. My confidence supersedes all this. Exactly. Come on. We've been here. I've been here for 11 years. My wife, Pauline, she's been here for 20 years. We never, we can't complain about racism. It's there, but don't worry about it. That's not something to stop you from coming to America. Come on, guys. Hello, Bob. Anonymous, Dennis. Why, Dennis? Why are you calling yourself anonymous? Hello, Bob. Thank you so much for taking your time to take us through this program. I have a question about the new immigration rules that the Trump administration is yet to put across, especially on the H-1B visa on immigrant workers and OPT. Since the administration is there to impose new immigration restrictions on H-1B visa holders, international students and others. Now, one thing that you need to understand is this, okay? At the end of the day, the U.S. really loves people who have the skills, okay? Okay. One thing that I don't want, that, that's what this Trump administration really has been trying to fight is, especially those people who are here, they don't have the papers, they came through the, you know, the border and things like those. But at the end of the day, this country was built by immigrants who have the, who have the brains, okay? That's why they have the employment-based green card. It's going to be there. That's not going to go away, okay? Even if they, they, even if they tighten up things, Okay, you have to have the right skills. That's what we are trying to do. Okay, we can't just sit there and say, hey, you know what, things are changing. Then we sit there and then watch as all the, these, these Indians come. Okay, we, we have to fix things. And that's what we are trying to fix. We have you, we train you, we make sure that you have the skills so that you can be able to get the jobs here. They can't just get rid of these um, skilled worker jobs. Okay, so don't worry about those things. Um, it's some of those things that you really have to, you know, to deal with at the moment. But hopefully also this, this I don't want to talk about <laughs> nasty things about the Trump administration, but hopefully this administration won't be there next time. So, you know, um, but don't worry about that. Okay, I still a lot of this. And, and this country, they get about 1 million international students every year. They need you. They need international students. I'm telling you. They need international students. So if they change anything, it's going to be detrimental to them because these universities, they need international students. International students, they pay twice as much as what in-state students pay. Okay, so they can't run their universities without international students, I'm telling you. So it's going to get a lot of, um, you know, um, pushback, okay, from uh, all the stakeholders. So in case someone tries to do that. But... Don't worry about those things. You focus on what you have to do, right? Focus on what you can do yourself. Leave the rest. When it comes, you'll figure things out. Okay, but don't, I always, be, always be positive. Don't be limited about those other, there are some other things that you can't change. Just try to do what you can change and there'll always be a way out. Yeah, there'll always be a way out. Just do what you need to do. Have the right skills, have the right mindset, the right uh, education, you'll be, you'll be fine. There'll be a way. You're not the only one. There's a lot of other, also Indians are thinking about how, how they can handle this thing. So don't be scared, man. Okay. Don't be scared. Okay. Does this mean that after studies, we won't be given a chance to work there after the new decisions were put in place? No, no, I don't know. I don't know exactly what really that those restrictions are. It's just people talking about it. Um, I also need to do maybe a little bit more research on it. But again, uh, those restrictions, they, I don't, I can't really answer that. You know, I can't say, oh, you're not allowed to work. There must be a way to work here. Okay, maybe they may say maybe it's one year instead of three years, but they still need, they still need international students. A lot of these guys who are working in these top farms, Americans, they don't have these skills. Most of them, they come here as students. Those who work at Google, Facebook, well, where will all those people go? Okay, so I don't think it's going to go through, but who knows? But don't let that stop you guys. You, you, you focus on what you need to do. Hello, Mr. Bob. Thank you so much for taking time to take us through this program. I have a question about, okay, I think I've answered that. On a lighter note, in another life, Bob, would you have been a pastor Benjamin and we preach two hours? Nasty Akutoa Sadaka. Thank you, thank you so much. Probably, who knows, maybe. 
Thanks so much for the webinar. Say hello to Elsie, Pauline, Chloe, and the rest. Who is this, Brian? Okay, I will. Chloe, Chloe, she's here. Um, what if I graduate and get a different job other than IT? No, we want IT people. Atiboba, kwe pasta, apewe sadaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would love to get that sadaka, by the way. Okay, I think that's it. I think uh, I've answered all the questions. Unless anybody has any other question, I think I will let the meeting end. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.